Every couple of years, Intel refreshes its budget line of N-series CPUs, while AMD is sadly absent, giving consumers fewer choices. Thanks, Lisa. But what happens if yester yester yester's AMD mid-range ultra-low power processor drops to a similar price? Raw performance-wise, complete slam dunk. But there's a few buts, which we'll go over right after this short message. The EaseUS disk copy software makes upgrading your storage drives faster and easier. Clone drives or migrate Windows installations to new ones with a simple and easy to use interface. This app supports disk, system and even partition cloning. Find out more with the link in the video description. The Paladin Wo 4 brings AMD's 6 core 12 thread 5500U CPU with Vega graphics to the usual mini form. Included is 16GB of DDR4 memory and a 512GB SSD for storage, coming in at just $228 US dollars. Or at least, it was $228 when I checked. Anyway, the $228 price point brings it close to budget mini prices featuring Intel's N-Series. Paladin's Wo 4 is a simple two-tone plastic box and looks pretty nice. Something a little different, and I'm cool with it. Plastic quality is reasonably solid, but not super thick. There's a little squeaking with enough pressure applied, but it's far from the worst plastic to land on this disc. Inside the box is a power supply, manual, SAT expansion ribbon, monitor mount, screws, and HDMI. Now here's the part I absolutely freaking love. To open it, put your finger in the rear end and push it until it pops. Wait, that didn't come out right. Anyway, it's got a magnetic lid for super easy access. What more could you want? Apart from a finger in the, the top lid has space for a 2.5 inch SATA drive if you want to add additional storage, while the Gen 3 NVMe drive has a heatsink on it. Excellent! It's not all awesomeness though. The included memory is only a single stick of DDR4 3200. So I asked Peloton why it's not a dual kit, and the answer is to offer you upgradeability. So I have to ask you, my dear viewers, do you want the option of upgradeability or more performance from a dual channel kit. But before you answer, check out the benchmarks and then sound off in the comments, as Peladin wants to know. Underneath the SSD is an M.2 Realtek 8852BE Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth card. Port-wise on the front, there's dual USB 3 5 gigabit, a 10 gigabit Type-C with display out, audio jack, and BIOS reset button. The back has dual USB 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0, as well as Realtek Gigabit and 2.5 Gigabit LAN for networking. This Mini is powered by a barrel jack, so you can use up to three 4K displays with this Mini when using all the ports, including USB-C. Peladin's Wo4 comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, which has been modified, but a scan came up clean. So what's been changed? Well, there are all these desktop icons pre-populated, which a fresh install doesn't have by default, and the search bar has been switched to icon only, and the option to change it back is missing in settings. You'd have to regit it to fix it. Ugh. Anyway, Ubuntu works fine off a USB drive if you prefer to wipe the windows. I didn't have any networking issues or other problems in my brief test. So as I mentioned earlier, the Peladin Wo4 is closest in price to Intel's budget CPU minis, and performance-wise, the closest CPU would be the N305, which launched in B-Link's EQ12 Pro for the awful, awful price of $350 US last year. Looking on Amazon now, I couldn't find any N305 Mini, which doesn't actually come as a surprise given the poor value proposition. But let's compare them anyway. Oh, and an Intel N100 Mini with a similar feature set to Peladin's Wo4 would be the B-Link EQ12, which is around $230 US. So same price, and spoiler alert, the Wo4 wins out in performance. Okay, so the AMD Ryzen 5500U is just over 13% ahead of the N305 in single core Cinebench. In multi core, the 5500U is in a different league. By default, this one is running at 45 watts, but can be configured to run at 54 watts if you don't mind more fan noise and a higher CPU temp. It's 45% ahead of the N305 at its default power mode, and almost 72% maxed out. Video encoding is a benchmark that benefits from more CPU and GPU performance, and with the default single channel configuration, the 5500U barely takes the win. 
So I put in two sticks of DDR4 3200 and the time to finish encoding the video was slashed by almost 100 seconds or around a third. Upping the power limit slashed almost another 10%. In the 3 d Mark graphics benchmark, you can clearly see how far the 5500U is against Intel's N-Series. Increasing the power limit doesn't improve the graphics score, but two sticks of memory definitely does. With one stick of RAM, it's a 24% jump over the N305, and with dual channel memory, the 5500U is... 109% faster. For a GPU heavy game, that could mean more than double the frame rate. So how much faster is the iGPU with dual channel memory? Good question, 68%. In DX12, the 5500U is almost 133% faster than the N305. This is some crazy shit. But since the WoW 4 doesn't come with two sticks, it's actually around 47% faster in this test. Okay, so all the metrics we looked at, the 5500U is far ahead and makes the N305 an unviable chip at the prices it launched at. Just like I said in my review of it, which some viewers weren't too happy to hear. Sorry, not sorry. There are some other differences between the N305 and 5500U as well. One advantage of the Intel N chips is AV1 hardware video decoding and the support for other video codecs as well. While AMD's Ryzen has none and it's all software based. But the Ryzen 5500U has the advantage when it comes to PCIe lanes. More lanes means the NVMe drive can run at Gen 3 X4 speeds and still have other features like the 2.5 gigabit LAN and USB-C along with it. The PLAN SSD found in this mini isn't fast in sequential reads and especially writes, but it's okay in the random 4K metric, which is what counts at the budget end. I've tested 4K video editing on the faster 5700U and it wasn't a good experience. So I'd stick to 1080p video editing on this box if that's your goal. But again, Intel's QuickSync video decoder helps a lot, especially for scrubbing across the video timeline. Time for the game test. Unfortunately, I don't have the B-Link EQ12 Pro Mini I bought with me anymore, so I'll only pit the 5500U against the N305 where I do have comparison footage that matches. I'll also add in single and dual channel comparisons so you can see the difference in performance. All the tests are done with the default power limit to bring power consumption closer to the N305. Peladon's WO4 performs similarly to the N305 in Valorant with single channel memory. And no surprise, the frame rate shoots up with dual channel, staying above 100 FPS instead of dropping below it. Dota 2, there's around a 50% improvement with dual channel. The difference grows larger in Counter-Strike 2. It's almost doubling the frame rate. League of Legends, again, big difference. And if you want to play Forza Horizon 5, you need dual channel memory to get a playable frame rate. And wow, GTA 5 sees a doubling in frame rate in some scenes. Okay, now let's check out emulation. I've got the N305 back in. Only the WoW 4 with dual channel memory can play Gran Turismo 4 at full speed.
Need for Speed Most Wanted is held back by the single core performance of each CPU, and the Ryzen 5500U doesn't do any better than Intel's CPU in this game. Mario Kart Wii shows exactly what we saw in the graphics benchmarks and is only full speed with dual channel memory. Okay, let's have a look in the BIOS and I'll show you how to increase the power limit. Mash the delete key when you turn on the mini. Hit to advanced and you can see options for wake on LAN, AC power loss and S5 RTC wake settings if you need them. Hit to AMD CBS, NBIO common options, SMU common options, system configuration and set it to the power limit of your choice. Then save and exit. Peladon's WO4 idles at 9 watts like the majority of minis tested in the budget range. The maximum amount of juice pulled from the wall depends on the power mode. At the default power mode, 55 watts max is not bad considering you get quite a bit more performance while gaming or under a full core workload compared to the N305. Cooling on this mini has no problem keeping the CPU temp under control with the default power mode. At 54 watts, the CPU temp maxes out much higher and the fan becomes pretty noticeable under load. Unfortunately, there's no working temperature sensor on the included NVMe drive, so nothing to share. But it should hold up fine since it has a heatsink on it, and there's some ventilation on the sides of the Mini. Okay, so what I like about Peladon's WO4 is the price, making it very competitive. Cooling for the default power mode is good, I also like the design, and absolutely love the magnetic lid for getting access to storage and memory. What I don't like is a single stick of RAM, which can cut graphics performance almost in half depending on the usage case. Also, I like to see a regular Windows install with just the drivers added. If it also supported USB power delivery, that would have been awesome. As it is, the Paladin WO4 is a very nice and affordable mini, which you should definitely consider. And if you're not using it for video encoding, decoding or gaming, the single channel memory won't be an issue. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you like the idea of being able to change the power limit on the fly, but with a switch on the mini instead of having to go into the BIOS every time, then check out the Ace PC Powerbox Mini, which allows you to do just that. Cheers!